So I'm Leora Levy. I'm running for U.S. Senate because I've never been so worried about our country. The policies of Joe Biden, rubber stamped and approved by Dick Blumenthal, are crushing the American dream for all Connecticut families. Um, so we have two other Republicans in the race, too. What sets you apart from them? Well, I am a principled, common sense, conservative outsider. I have never been on a ballot before. My opponents, one is a career politician over 22 years in office. The other is a perennial candidate. He's run multiple times over 10 years and has never been elected to anything. I, I am a career American is what I like to call myself. I, I was America first before anybody coined the phrase. I escaped Cuba with my family. We escaped communism in Cuba, came here with absolutely nothing. I watched my father work hard to build a life for us here. The one thing they couldn't take from him was his good education and his very good mind. So he was able to succeed here. That's my American dream. I've lived my American dream. I was able to go to college. I, I was, had a career on Wall Street. I was nominated to be an ambassador and now I'm running for U.S. Senate. Oh, and I'm a mother. I have three wonderful sons. That's the important stuff. Yes, mother and wife. <laughs> so, so I want that for all Connecticut families. I want them to be able to live their American dreams. You know, um, you know, Donald Trump rode the outsider wave to the White House. He really pitched himself as someone who's not part of the swamp, someone who's not been in Washington my whole life. Uh, and that, that really resonated with a lot of people. Um, do you think people are ready for an outsider? Absolutely. People want an outsider. It's, it's the career politicians who got us into this mess. And I can tell you that all of the entrenched interests in Hartford are aligning behind my opponent. I am the principled, common sense conservative outsider in the race. But, but you know, but some people, but some Republicans have buyer's remorse about Trump. Well, look at the policies. Look at the country under, under President Trump. Look what he accomplished with all the adversity he had to face. The economy was booming and recovering from COVID. We got hit by COVID. That was not his fault, but we were in recovery. Now, as President Biden puts it, we're in transition from recovery to recession. We are in a recession, two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Um, we, people are hurting, life is unaffordable, and parents have to make tough decisions. Do we fill my, our tank? Do we feed our family? How are we going to afford school supplies, school clothes, at the end of the month when schools start? This um, is very difficult for all Connecticut families. Your ads have been very pointed against them as Clarinus. Um, what, what, what's your view of her in terms of being, you know, I guess a true conservative? Well, you know, the ads have been pointed in both directions. Let me tell you that. There, there's a fault. Her, her super PAC is, has mounted a false attack against me. Her super PAC funded by a felon who was convicted of bribery and corruption and brought down a Republican governor in the biggest political scandal in modern Connecticut political history. He's supporting her super PAC to the tune of $50,000 and have maxed out along with members of his family, $8,700 each, to her, her, general her direct campaign. So they're attacking me for being a successful businesswoman, which I wish I was as successful as they claim. That didn't happen. I was, a, I was on Wall Street at a time when it was really tough for women. I was a salaried employee. I, I did not make the millions they claim. I wish I had. But um, it was a really challenging time. I broke the glass ceiling. I was one of five women traders in a company of 11,000 employees. I was 23 years old. But let, let me so, ask, but let me ask you about. I the, just want to clarify sure. that record. But I, I, I am curious though, because you know, one one of the ads you're running says you know, Themis is not one of us. Kind of explain what what you mean by that. 
Well, her views on Second Amendment are not what Republican voters support. She helped to write the very restrictive gun legislation in Connecticut. She voted for it. She has said she will do the exact same thing on the federal level. That is, pre uh, that is Senator Blumenthal's position. And I, on the other hand, have been rated 2A by CCDL. And I have the, uh, as of yesterday, I can announce, I have the highest possible rating from the NRA for a candidate who has never served in office before. That so, so that is a very stark contrast. But does that put her in a better position to go against Blumenthal in what's traditionally a blue state? I don't think so at all, because there are many law-abiding citizens who own guns. The Second Amendment is an unalienable right granted, written in our Constitution, granted by God, written in our Constitution. I will always support the Second Amendment and the right of law-abiding citizens to own guns, whether for sport or to protect themselves. We're living at a time of increased crime. They've defunded the police. They've removed their qualified immunity, which, again, my opponent participated in writing that, that bill, the Police Accountability Bill, and it has damaged our, our law enforcement in this state. We have a shortage of cops. We have increased crime just here in Greenwich. Two weeks ago, a woman was mugged in broad daylight on Greenwich Avenue. And today, in, in the emails from the Greenwich Time, they're looking for a couple who committed armed robbery on Greenwich Avenue in June. I've lived here 34 years. I've never heard that happening here before. So there is increasing crime. There is a shortage of police. And in the meantime, she wants to, to eliminate law-abiding citizens' ability to protect themselves. Um, I, that's a stark difference. I will also say that the issues that are going to drive this election are the economy, the increasing inflation, the high gas prices, the, the increasing crime, the, the invasion at our border, and the, the infringement, the of parental rights over their own children. That is a major issue. And that is, as a mother, I will always stand with parents' right to decide for their children. Um, do you think abortion is going to play a role? I don't, because the abortion laws in Connecticut are codified. But you're not, but just to be clear, you guys aren't running for the Connecticut legislature. No, you're running, I'm running for Congress. For, Congress, for U.S. Senate. Right, right. And, U.S. And, Senate. And, and Mitch, McC you know, Mitch McConnell has said that should the Republicans take over the Senate, he would be open to a national abortion ban. Well, I'm not going to speculate on something that isn't the case. It hasn't been proposed. I am per personally pro-life. I recognize the exceptions of life of the mother, rape and incest. My own personal experience as a mother has informed my view. And that is where my heart is. And that's where we want all Americans' hearts to be. 70% I mean, do you, do you of Americans believe there should be some limits on abortion. All w Western countries, most Western countries, the European Western democracies, all have limits between 14 and 16 weeks. Sure. The United States is in a, a small club of about five countries, including China and North Korea, that allow abortion up to the day of birth. But, I don't think that's a club in which we want to belong. But, but do you think, let me think how I want to word this question. Do you think against Dick Blumenthal, that puts you or Peter Lamage at a disadvantage because the polls show that most Connecticut residents favor legal abortion. The, the laws in Connecticut are the laws in Connecticut. I will have no effect on the laws in Connecticut. Well, it makes me sad that our governor is advertising Connecticut as a sanctuary state and, and trying to get companies to bring their businesses to Connecticut so that, because their employees can get abortions. I think he should try to make this a business friendly state. Then companies will bring their business. But it makes me personally sad that that's how he wants our state known. And my opponent was instrumental in helping to make Connecticut a, a sanctuary state for abortion. She has a 100% rating from NARAL. She was 
She was endorsed by Planned Parenthood. She speaks at their rallies. I attend the March for Life. I've been endorsed by Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America. There is a stark difference there, and to the extent that it will affect the, the race, again, the issues that p people really care about are whether they can feed their kids, whether they can put gas in their car, what's it gonna cost to heat my home with heating oil this winter? Those are the issues that are driving this election. Last question, um, do you, how do you see turnout being? I mean, it's very hard to get people to come out to a primary in the middle, in the of, middle, middle of, of August. Summer, right? Yes, I um, know. Every, this is my vacation, and I'm <laughs> loving it. <laughs> I mean, but, but I mean, you know, how, how do you see turnout, and do you think that you know, do you think that helps you or or hurts you? Well, I I feel momentum. You know, I'm all over the state every single day and I feel momentum on the ground. Everywhere I go, people are stopping me saying either they voted for me absentee or they're planning to vote for me. I am winning straw polls. I've won one straw poll at, in uh, Coventry, 68%. I won another straw poll by CT Ram, 63%. It wasn't even close. So I really feel the momentum and I'm very grateful and honored to have the support of the Republican voters of Connecticut. Do you feel like turnout is going to really be important here, especially who ends up coming out yes. next Tuesday? I, of course. Yes, it is. And I encourage all the Republicans who can vote in Tuesday's um, primary, please vote. Come out and vote. I would be honored to have your vote. and. If you're not going to be there and you know it's, you can still get an absentee ballot, go to your town clerk, get the ballot, fill it out. I would really appreciate your support. It, is, it matters who we nominate. We will not defeat Blumenthal with another candidate who is just like he is, career politician. You know, she's been in office 22 years. If she serves in the Senate, she will be in office over 40 years the way he was. He has been. That's not what, what America wants. That's not what the voters of Connecticut want. We need a, a principled, common sense conservative outsider. And that's who I am. I'm a career American, not a career politician. All right, got our sound bite. OK.